Okay, I think this is recording. Let me try this. There we go. I can actually do window and window with the with the webcam. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm going to do this as a little video because I saw I saw this thread pop up on on Reddit earlier on. So it's someone referencing a a short uh, excerpt video that I did for a larger DivKid video that's uh, covering sample and holds as a bigger topic. Uh, so yeah, I, I put in a little excerpt that was demonstrating ways of using sample and holds to create sort of eight bit style video game uh, sound effects. Um, yeah, someone was asking questions about that, so I thought I'll, I'll just record this as a video and do it in VCD, right? Because then I can share the actual patch um, as a as a demonstration. So sample and holds, they are I think uh, one of the more underrated circuits out there. Uh, really musically useful, but uh, a lot of the times they're kind of just like included into a lot of VSTs or soft synths, just as that sort of classic stepped step random as a sort of LFO effect. Uh, but yeah, there are lots of interesting ways of using them, which uh, I'll hopefully be able to capture here. So collection of modules, I'm going to be using uh, Nyoni as, as my LFO. Uh, Tai is the sample and hold itself, and I'm going to use the CSL as both the audio oscillator that we're going to be listening to, which will be this square wave, uh, and I'm going to use the lower oscillator just as a square wave as the clock over the sample node. So that gives me a, a more direct, uh, a wider range of frequencies that I can clock at. Uh, we'll need a few utility bits in here as well. I'm going to add in a 1F as an attenuator. So that way I can reduce the depth of modulation over volt per octave, so I'm not getting crazy wide octave spreads. Uh, then other stuff we'll need, VCB, we'll need an audio output. Let's add that and let's add a couple of scopes as well. So we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, so yeah, let's get audio going first. I'm going to patch my pulse wave from the top, top oscillator of the CSL out. Let's extend that time base a bit and bring level down and let's just set that to external headphones. Let's bring that up. There we go. Square wave. Uh, keep that fairly conservative level. Uh, I'll try and keep the audio balance as I go. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be our, our main voice and I'm going to be controlling the pitch of it using a sample and hold. So the way I'm going to patch that is uh, I'll view this on the scope here so we can see what's going on. Let's bring the rate up. Let's go faster. There we go. There's that classic stepped random shape that's kind of buried in a lot of different uh, synthesizers and VSTs or yeah, anything that you get that sort of, you know, you have a built-in L4, a lot of the times they just have that random step thing and that's that's the sample and hold. But it's, uh, yeah, I think it's a lot more powerful than those basic inclusions might lead you to believe. So what we're hearing now is just random step voltage, this pattern here, attenuated a bit, controlling the pitch of the square wave. So change that to a sine wave and this will give us that sort of classic sci-fi computer lab type sound. Not hugely musical at the moment, but uh, let's do something a bit more interesting. So this is sampling noise, which is why it's, it's, you're getting those, those random steps, because every time it clocks, it's just picking an amplitude that is sampled from that white noise source. Uh, but where things get more interesting is if we use a more familiar shape. So I'm going to go with the sawtooth from this Nyoni running as an LFO. And before I patch that in, I put the rate all the way up. So this is essentially oversampling, sampling fast enough that we're not hearing the discrete steps. Uh, to go further than that, I'll use the square wave source from this CSL. So this audio rate oscillator is my clock source now. So you see, I've reduced that down and we're starting to see the stepping. What we need to do is, let's branch this down here. We will be able to see the original wave as well as the sampled, sampled wave. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we can hear we've got a, an LFO sawtooth ramp that's controlling the pitch of the oscillator, which uh, it's got that sort of like uh, Star Trek siren red alert sound. Um, as I bring down the clock frequency, 
we're going to start hearing this as more discrete steps at the frequency of the clock. See it on the scope there as well. Where things get interesting is when we start playing with this, essentially adding an alias tone. So if we sample too slowly, especially as we approach that Nyquist frequency, that sort of like half, half um, frequency point of the sample rate versus the highest frequency we want to capture, uh, we're going to start to get alias tones, but in this context, they are at lower clock rates and over control voltage. So what do alias tones sound like in this context? At the moment, we can hear that's, that's outlining the pattern of the ramp of that familiar sawtooth LFO shape. But if I speed up my ramp a bit, there'll be a point where I reduce down my clock and we're getting this inaccurate uh, stepped step ramp. Uh, but because this is a ratio of like two analog oscillators, uh, the, the reset point's not going to be perfect every single time, so we're going to get this sort of evolving arpeggio. Especially if I slow my clock down. So this is where I'm defining my tempo, is the rate of this, this clock LFO. And then I'm going to speed up my actual sampled LFO, and there'll be a point where it stops... Uh, basically, we're, we're at that Nyquist frequency where it's no longer able to capture the sawtooth with enough clarity to be recognizable. Um, there we are, so we're getting this sort of like wonky arpeggio, essentially. And then we're getting like a, a descending trill of different notes. And this is pretty much the patch. It's it's uh, sample and hold, sampling an LFO, clocked by another LFO, and it's the ratio between these two signals that we want to play with. And because these are analog oscillators, it's infinite, the range of different patterns that we can get. So let's try and get something that sounds particularly video game-like. I'm going to speed up my LFO a bit, speed up my clock. There we go. That was a cool one. This is me just changing the changing the, the frequency of the track the sawtooth wave. And we're getting all these different complex patterns. Let's change the pulse width a bit. There we go. So kind of the, the point I was trying to make in, in that little excerpt I did for Ben was uh, this is this is not a new technique. Like this is this is a weird analog, well, because of VCB rack it's digital, so it's a digital version of analog version of a digital process. But um, historically with, with the video game sound effects, these are very uh, space efficient ways of generating complex patterns of notes because all I need to know is essentially three three values. Uh, it's the frequency of my starting oscillator, the frequency of my LFO that's being sampled, and the sample rate. So, so long as I've got that combination of modulators, sample and hold, and carrier tone, um, I just need to recall a really small finite number of, uh, of values to get a wide range of sound effects. It's a pretty fun patch. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy in a second sample and hold, bring that down really slow. And uh, this is actually a manual clock button. So I'm going to use this as a random modulator over my clock rate. Sample that same signal here. I'll also send that random voltage to my pulse width control. 
Every time I clock this manually, getting a new random sound effect. Yeah, pretty fun. Cool. I'll save this as a patch and I'll, I'll share this as a link in the description of this video. But uh, hope you have fun with this. Cheers.